time for that Wrestling Perspective Podcast. I'm Dennis Farrell. I know you love me and you miss me. And he is my friend to the north or maybe east, depending on where we are right now. Petey Williams. How's she going, eh? How is it going, my good friend? Uh, you know, it's it's good. I just, I, I get so excited when we end up recording. Like, right beforehand, and I do this in my matches, too. Like, right before I go out to my matches, I'm like, oh, I don't want to wrestle. And then, like, the music hits, just like that happened right there. And I'm just like, oh, I'm amped up and I'm ready to go. Same thing with our podcast. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm so comfortable watching football, whatever. I don't want to podcast. Then the music hits and we're podcasting. And I get super, super pumped up just to, like, talk wrestling for the fans and stuff. And, Man, I don't know. Is that weird, Dennis? No, not at all. Because, look, I'll put this out here on Front Street. No, you know what? Yes, I'll put it out on Front Street now, and we'll do our our advertising a little bit later. But uh, I don't know how your week was, PD, but I've I've been dealing with some stuff, and we'll leave it at that. And Mm -hmm. I I put out a statement, which you approved and listened to, and that was kind of really all we're truly going to say about it. But we just wanted to say together, thank you to the friends. I've had so many yes. people reach out to me and say they have our backs. They're not going to stop listening. You know, we've had some people that said, you know, you, you've been affiliated with something and we don't want to be affiliated with you. And I 100% understand that. But to, to the fans that are listening right now to the podcast, we 100% deeply, deeply appreciate each and every one of your downloads. Uh, emails, the phone calls we've gotten, the shirts you're about to buy from us. Huh? You like that? No. Uh, yep. Good setup. Thank you. So, but we just want to say thank you. And that's all we're from this moment on. We're done with it. We're moving on. Uh, guilty or innocent. We hope justice is served either way. And that's it. That's our final statement. Yeah. And it kind of reminds you of, uh, you know, uh, impact back in the day, you know, we're, we're working up, working up and then, uh, you know, stuff happens and then, uh, we're kind of back at, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the ground level again, working our way up again. So that's where we are. Like we went full circle. Dennis, we started doing this, what, a couple of years ago, it, two it, years ago, I believe just about now. in February. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're back to where, you know, right where we started <laughs> me and you baby. That's right. And that's where it's at. And you know, but now we just we we have guests and stuff. We have a great guest on tonight. We got uh, the world champion of Impact, um, Johnny Impact, which I'm I'm super excited about. Super cool guy. I can't say enough good things about him. Um, so I mean, we're gonna still keep doing what we do, Dennis, and what we've always done, and uh, just stay true to the fans and put out the you know the best podcast and, and wrestling show that we possibly can. So, and with that being said, we're going to move forward, and part of moving forward is hawking shirts. So we've we've yeah. we, we have shirts now. If you go to whatforapparel dot com backslash or forward slash slash it WPP, you can get shirts. We have one design up now. It is a pretty cool rip off of the NWO logo with a little Canadian flag kind of in the back. So if you're Canadian or you just like red and white. Uh, it's it's WPP and NWO logo. We're going to have more shirts coming up super soon. So keep checking in. We'll tell you on the podcast when we get more shirts on there, shirts and hoodies. And we hope you'll go buy one because, look, my kid probably has to go to college. I'm not even going to lie to you. No, come on. No. No. Or, you know, you have one kid. I have three kids. My kids need to go to college. I also, you know, and I don't know why I don't promote this more. We're on every single week. And I have T-shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com. I, I have like two or three T-shirts on there. And you could go on there too and buy a Petey Williams T-shirt um, as well as the Wrestling Perspective Podcast T-shirt. Yeah. Um, none of yeah. none of your uh, Pro Wrestling Tees uh, proceeds go to my kid's schooling. So <laughs> No, but they go, they go to my kid's schooling. So, buy I mean, t-shirts. Hey, should we start like, hey, uh, who's going to get the most proceeds for their kid's schooling? Should we start like a little fun? No. No, because I have Forget to. It. Forget I have it. To, I, have, I still have to split the podcast with you. Yeah. So you're going to. It's true. No matter what, you're going to win. But go over there, buy your shirt in time for Christmas, uh, birthdays, or just because it's cold and you want to get a hoodie, go get one. Support us. We support you. We love you. 
Uh, BlueChew.com is sticking around. Thank you, BlueChew.com. Go to BlueChew.com. Use the promo code WPP, and you get your first order of Blue Chew for free. Just pay $5 shipping and handling. Pete, we say it every week. They have the same ingredients as uh, Cialis and Viagra. They're chewable, so they work twice as fast. At my age, now 41. Happy birthday to me again. I I need this. And it's not... I'm trying to explain it for people to understand. It's not a pill to get uh, your tag team partner ready to go. It's a pill to get you and your partner ready to go. It, it's a pick-me-up. Uh, I, I know people think, oh, I don't need that. Trust me. You may not feel like you need it, but when you take it, you'll never want to go back, Pete. No, and I agree. I mean, you may not need it, but I mean, what's what's – you know, you take – I look at it like this. You're in the gym. You know, you work out, you're fine at working out in the gym, but you know what? Maybe you want to take a little bit of creatine. Maybe you want to take a little bit of glutamine to get that extra pump going on. Same thing with blue chew, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of extra legal edge, right? That's right. Your girlfriend will thank you. And by the way, if you're a woman listening to this and maybe your boyfriend can't really get that super kick up or finish the match, you know, when when the ref is telling you to take it home and he can't quite get there or maybe... You had a TV time limit, time limit of 10 minutes, and he's out. He's blown up in the first two minutes. This is going to help him. Trust me. You like that one? Yeah, you don't want, yeah, you don't have to uh, carry the match all the way through. You, you don't want to be that person where somebody has to carry you through, right? You want to be the one carrying or, or uh, you know, really living up to your end of the deal. That's for sure. So, and listen, you've spent five bucks on worse. Probably one of our shirts here in a minute. So... Go go to bluechew.com. WPP is a promo code. Use it. Uh, help us. And it's free. It's five bucks. You know, t- throw it away if you don't want to use it. But just support us. That's that's where we are now with the advertising of the podcast. It's It stops going from, this is amazing, to just spend the five bucks, guys. Stop making me have to shill for it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't throw it away. Give it to me. Mail it to me. But then I'll get these like ridiculous. Is this even a blue chew pill? Why does this look different than the regular blue chew pill? Oh, I might as well take it because they said it was a blue chew pill. Uh, all right. So Thanksgiving, by the way. Happy Thanksgiving. This is our Thanksgiving podcast. For me, Petey yes, Williams. Happy, um, yeah, happy American Thanksgiving to you too. For me, Petey, Thanksgiving means Survivor Series. It was just happened. Uh, I I'll be honest, I, I watched it live only because uh, the Survivor Series is one of my all-time favorite pay-per-views. I always loved, and I've said it many times on this podcast, Thanksgiving night. And back in the day, there was only one or two NFL games. There was the afternoon, it was the Lions and whoever. And then the evening game, it was usually the Cowboys and Redskins. Which well, I, see, yeah. That's the game this year. And then we would get the Survivor Series pay-per-view that night. And it always made it special to the point when the network came out and I got the network. Even still, every Thanksgiving night, I would throw on an old Survivor Series to really kind of make it feel like the holidays for me. Yeah, no, Survivor Series is one of my, I mean, it's one of the big fours. So it's got like, yeah, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series. And I remember going to... uh, I mean, I don't know if it was the first Survivor Series. Um, it was the one in at the uh, at the Joe in, in Detroit, and it was uh, Thanksgiving Eve, which in Canada means absolutely nothing to us. It's just another Wednesday. I had to go to school the next day, and it was uh, Hulk Hogan versus the Undertaker when the Undertaker won the world title, and um, it wasn't the first one. I mean, it was there were probably like uh, that was probably like maybe the third Survivor Series, but yeah, Survivor Series is a really big deal. I always loved watching them uh, with my dad and stuff, and uh, it's just a great pastime in wrestling. And also, we'll we'll get back to the Survivor Series here in a few minutes, but I want to talk 2018, and we'll probably do some sort of review podcast. I know during the holidays, our plan is. We're going to take all the interviews we had this year and kind of turn them into one long podcast. And if, if you're just new to it and you don't want to go back and listen to an old episode with where we talk wrestling, it's past, but you missed out on a good interview. That's what we're kind of going to do is take the interviews out of the show, put all the interviews in one big long show, and you can kind of either catch up, relive, or listen for the first time to some of these interviews we've done. So that's going to be our Christmas week-ish podcast for that time. But 2018's wrapping up, and 
now that you're back in Impact, I know your watching wrestling has been very limited. But for you and what's been on your radar, even if it's just an Impact, what have been some of the wrestling highlights for you in 2018? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I just look at Impact and I'm like, uh, you know, probably the debut of Johnny Impact. Uh, you know, he's going to be on our uh uh, he's our guest later on today. So just no. having him with the company, that was, that was, um, pretty big. Um, what's one of yours, Danny? You know, you can go through the all in stuff, Jericho, the Jericho cruise, you know, kind of thinking back to this year, maybe it might be, would, would Jeff Jared maybe going in the hall of fame, I think might be one of my highlights. I'm a Jeff Jared guy. You yeah. Know, that was that, that was a big shocker. That, I mean, and we had him on the podcast as a guest. So, was the, um, and he might have been like one of our first guests. Wasn't I he? think he was the first guest. Yeah. So, I mean, that's. <laughs> well, I mean, we started off with a big bang, I guess you could say. So, I mean, this year alone was the 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 first year we actually had guests on our podcast. I would say. I, I'd say that you know what, Velveteen Dream. Everything he's done all year has been a highlight for me. If. Have you not seen the NXT TakeOver from this weekend, Pete? Take some time. Every TakeOver, and, and people forget, TakeOver is a very protected show. You have a handful of matches on a show that only is an hour long a week, so they don't have to stretch themselves thin. So a lot of people look at the NXT product through rose-colored glasses of, well, these guys are familiar, are, are phenomenal, why can't the WWE main roster be like that? But you've got five hours of weekly television slash web series and videos to fill. Then you have, what, four to five hours, depending on the pay-per-view of pre-show and the pay-per-view. You're stretched thin. If you were to take the NXT product and put it onto the main roster and its time constraints, the same thing would happen to that. Yeah, I mean, this and the thing is with NXT is you have a big developmental territory you have an hour long show, an hour, okay? Once a week. Impact even does two hours. So this is only one hour long. And then you have uh, a, a pay per view special, you know, every four months that, or once every three months or, or, or sooner. And I did end up trying to watch uh, some of the takeover. Um, you know, Aleister Black and Johnny Gargano uh, had a, a great match. I saw some of the Velveteen's match with uh, Ciampa. Oh, yeah. Um, didn't get to the War Games. Yeah, I mean, Velveteen Dream. I mean, he's super charismatic over um, as a babyface, and and Champa. He's just in such great shape now, and he plays such a good heel. I, I know uh, probably a month or two ago we were talking about best heels mm -hmm. in the business right now, and we were talking about like Sammy Callahan, Bubba Ray, all that kind of stuff. Champa is one guy that like I don't know if we forgot, but like man, he's super underrated as a heel. Like he just Man, he, he, he does such a good job doing it, and he has a bright future ahead of him. Have you ever had any wrestling contact or, or know Gargano or Ciampa? Uh, yeah, Gargano. I was on a show with him uh, before. Uh, I worked uh, M-Dog 20, Matt Cross. Um, it was like uh, almost like right before I retired-ish, like maybe a year before. Um, and I don't remember who he wrestled, but you know, uh, Gargano was always a guy like when I look at him, um, and I don't know if he would agree or disagree. And he certainly evolved his character and his wrestling in the ring. But he, I used to look at Alex Shelley and what he does in the ring. And I'd look at this Johnny Gargano guy when he was first coming up and I'm like, Oh, Johnny Gargano wants to be Alex Shelley. That, that that's, that's the, you know, the similarity that that's, that's what I saw in, in Johnny Gargano because Alex Shelley, a lot of people, even with Dave Christ, when I first met Dave Christ of the Chris brothers, a lot of his movements in the ring, I'm like, dude, he looks like Alex Shelley in the ring, like in his earlier days. And then, you know, of course, he evolves his character and all that kind of stuff. So Alex Shelley was pretty influential in a lot of people. And that's what I saw with Johnny Gargano. Even when I watched this uh, NXT uh, takeover, when he got his, uh, I don't even know what he calls his finishing move, where it's kind of looks like a cross face with the guy's arm behind his, his head. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a move from Alex Shelley. He called it the border city stretch. Alex Shelley came up with that. Um, and uh, like the, 
the the sling over the rope, like the slingshot um, DDT. I remember Alex Shelley seeing that. So a lot of uh, similarities between the two, definitely. Um, but I mean, and and Champa, I want to say I've only when he used to work Ring of Honor, I might have stopped by there, but I don't have a lot of uh, I didn't have a lot of contact with him. But I've definitely never wrestled either of them. I went on Reddit today and I threw out and asked people what was some of their favorite things of 2018. I'm going to read some of them off here in a second. We still have Survivor Series to get to. Before we put a bow on those two things, I we we got to, and I feel I feel like a tool bringing this up, but we have to talk about Enzo Amore and what he did at Survivor Series. I know. <laughs> I know everybody's seen it. Uh, so the story is he gets a ticket, hard camera side, second, third row. He wears a cheap disguise. And apparently people were p- pinpointing him on the TV even before he jumped up. I didn't see it. And I didn't see anybody really call it out. But, uh, you know, a lot of people were in, you know, 2020 going, oh, I saw it. I knew it was him. So with that being said, I believe it was during the bar versus AOP match. I might be mistaken. He decides to jump up on the chair and start doing his, you know, Enzo Amore WWE promo. He gets essentially drug out. He had a spinner WWE spinner championship with, you know, all done up Enzo Amore style. He ends up getting drug out by WWE security all over it. Kudos to them. I bring this up, Pete, because... Have you ever heard of an incident like this happening with another wrestler uh, anywhere else? I've never been a part of it. I mean, that that's, um, you know, going into business for yourself. Um, so, okay, if I'm in Enzo Amore's head right now, okay, what he's thinking in his head, he's thinking like, man, I'm going to show up uh, opposite hard cam side and... You know, I'm going to be on WWE TV. They got no choice but to rehire me or, or whatever. They're, they have to acknowledge me in some point. Well, no, they don't. But not only that, there's like four guys in that ring trying to put on a performance right now. And you're, you know, stealing their thunder. So that's not cool at all. That I, I mean, that's equivalent of me trying to sell autographs on an indie show as two guys are in the ring. I would, I would never do that. Once the wrestling show starts, I go to the back. I'm. It, it's your time to shine. You know, th- this is your spotlight. I'm not going to take that away from you because I wouldn't want anybody to take that away from me. And, you know, think about it. If Enzo was in the ring and somebody did that to him, how would Enzo feel? So, I mean, if it was like, if it was a big work and that's him, them trying to get him back on the TV show, okay, great, you fooled me. But if it's not, I mean, like, Oh, Dude, it's that's not. like the, the worst. Th- okay. I mean, that's the worst thing to do. I mean, why would you do that? I mean, okay. Maybe he's trying to get people to talk about him. He doesn't care about getting rehired or anything. And maybe he's trying to, you know, do that so he can um, get downloads for his new rap album or whatever the case may be, whatever he's trying to promote right now. Um, sure. I mean, that would work, but I mean, that's just blacklisting him from all wrestling companies. I mean, no wrestling company is going to want, somebody like that to work for them i i think in theory it's a tad bit genius if he was serious about never wanting to wrestle again right you're about to release an album you're trying to get buzz and by the way i guess apparently when he did it wwe was you know at the french announce table you know how they go through now the germans now the spaniards now this and this and this announce tables they were in the middle of doing that when he jumped up and did that. So uh, very ill-timed on his part. But if you're not any interest in getting back into wrestling, you're about to release a CD and you want buzz, I, this is the best way to do it if, if you're Enzo. Yeah, no, like I said, if he's, if he's just wanting to get like buzz off his CD or whatever, great. You know, it, it's probably going to work. But... If he ever wants to get back into wrestling, absolutely not. I mean, he's going to get blacklisted. I mean, that's just going into business for yourself. I and, and all the boys too. Like you, 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 like you think. I think it was uh, the Bar versus AOP. You think any of them were happy about Enzo showing up? Because I, when that happened, then you know the fans are like you know watching Enzo get drug out and stuff like that. Now they have to try to wrestle, get the fans back involved, which is hard to do as a performer. 
um, when something else happens. So, I mean, that's, that's, I feel bad for the guys in the ring. I, I really do. Uh, well, I just want to touch on, and, and for the record, you've never heard of this. You've never heard any of the wrestlers even talk about, did you hear what Johnny, Max, or Frank did the other day? Um, not in this instance. I mean, the one thing Impact did a long time ago, um, like when I first was under contract with them, one of the, uh, and this isn't even the same, but one of the uh, Highlanders at the time, I think it was Ro- Robbie McAllister. It was Robbie and Rory. And he just came by to like, you know, the Impact tapings. He was currently under contract with WWE. Um, he came by the Impact tapings to say hi to a couple of the guys that he knew. And then uh, he brought his kids or kid. And then they kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll sit you out here. And I think they set him up. And they sat him out in the crowd and they kind of put the camera on him and put him on TV like. And they put, you know, WWE superstar uh, Robbie McAllister. And then obviously WWE saw that and they fired him. And so, I mean, it was it was the exact opposite of what this is. Like, he didn't want to be on camera, but they put him on camera. Um, but, you know, and it ruined the guy's career. So, um, but that was back in the old um, impact days. All right, let's talk about the best of 2018 here, what some of the Reddit uh, people had to say. Uh, Almas and Gargano uh, was one of uh, Strawberry SC's highlights. You have Ricochet and Cole. Those are two off the top of their head. And Ciampa and Dream from this weekend, which I'll give them. Ciampa Ciampa and Velveteen was phenomenal if you've not seen it. Uh, Hunter Pentagon says Okada and Omega. That was... That's something I went back and watched weeks later because I am very slow on New Japan to be caught up on stuff like that. But that was a great match, too. Yeah, everybody they just mentioned there on Reddit is, uh, I mean, all great matches. I do not uh, disagree with any of those. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't don't even know what to say about those. Uh, here's some o- here's some other ones. We're just gonna hit them and keep moving. Uh, Jericho Omega, which was a good one. You have uh, Walter versus P uh, PCO. I'm not sure about that one. Over the weekend, Gage almost killing David Arquette. We'll talk about Daniel Bryant and Brock Lesnar here in a few minutes. Uh, Charlotte and Becky last woman standing match was great. Uh, Mercedes versus Tessa. The 75 minute match was good. Uh, let's see here more. Okada, Omega, Jericho Cruz stuff popped up. All In is on this list of best. Uh, Mustache Mountain versus Undisputed was on someone's list. Uh, Angle McIntyre, uh, okay, to each their own. This this list is very subjective. Uh, let's see here before we move on. Okada, Marty Squirrel. Uh, let's see, Gargana, Champa feud. You can't forget that. The Rise yeah. of Becky Lynch, yeah. Uh, evolution event. Uh, I'll read off two more, and then we will go Velveteen, Undisputed, and uh, Kenny Omega. There we go. And, uh, many, many more, which we'll probably talk about when we do an end-of-the-year review podcast. Uh, Daniel Bryant, Brock Lesnar, I just want to bring this up, and I talked to you about this it, it probably when Daniel Bryant came back, and I really felt this way. Okay. The, WWE during this match did some amazing storytelling PD where outside of the the kick in the groin which seems like to be the new thing now for at least SmackDown superstars Daniel Bryan's done it Nakamura has been doing it for a while now that's how Daniel Bryant won the champion for those listening that aren't very WWE oriented or maybe you know but he did it against Brock Lesnar. But the beginning of this match, Brock Lesnar was throwing Daniel Bryan around like a rag doll. And when Daniel Bryan came back, I said, I, every Daniel Bryan match I watch, I watch worried. As a fan, as somebody I, I don't want to see get injured. I don't want to see anybody, but Daniel Bryan especially. I watch this match in every toss and rag doll and smack and punch. I just held my breath. And it was amazing writing and storytelling from the WWE to take me on this kind of emotional journey during this match. Yeah, so I actually watched, um, if this is a 12-minute match, I watched 10 minutes of it. Um, So I I think I missed like the first minute or two. I was kind of taking a little siesta, a little nap. 
Um, and I kind of woke up because I knew what happened at the beginning of the match. I like, I knew that people were like saying like, Oh, this is the same old Brock Lesnar match where he gives them a bunch of suplexes and we've seen it every match, which is great storytelling because everybody's thinking that. So now Brian and Lesnar has everybody bought hook, line and sinker. Like, Oh, this is going to be another Brock Lesnar style match until, you know, the nut shot. And then the knee and the place. I mean, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it when he gave him that nut shot. The place came unglued, and they really thought after that knee that that was the finish. Like, oh, he's got him. And then, you know, Lesnar actually like he was he caught two dives like like out of midair of of, uh, of Brian, and they were doing stuff back and forth, and then he would allowed him to have him in a submission and all this kind of stuff like. Like the first five minutes, okay, whatever. But the last like five was was great, and uh, I mean, I would have liked to have seen it if Daniel Bryan was the super over baby face. He just didn't turn heel because um, I think a lot of people are like, "Hey, wait a second! Like you're a bad guy now." But even though they were still on his side because um, he's a freshly turned heel, um, but I, I I really enjoyed it. The last like you know five minutes, I really enjoyed it, that match. It, gosh, and I I held my and you know Daniel, you're you're friendly with him. I don't want to use the word friends and over exaggerate your relationship with him, but you know him. Did you go on that same emotional journey, or being someone in the industry, do you just can you see through the facade of what they were putting on for people like me, the fan? Are you talking about like the first five minutes where you just ragged all some around? Yeah. No, so, like, the first five minutes, I'm like, are they really going to do this? Like, because I, I don't know how hard Lesnar wants to work. Like, he's like, hey, this is my match. You guys paid me to have a match like this. This is what I'm going to do. And then, which is shocking that, um, you know, Lesnar, like, it kind of reminded me of the old Lesnar. Like, doing spots, I guess you could mm-hmm. say. Like, stuff he has to actually remember and all that. And, like, selling for a littler guy, like when he picked him up for the F5 and then he kind of crumbled because <clears throat> um, Brian just like took out his knee and all that kind of stuff. Like that was great. You know, like the reversals and stuff that reminded me of the old Lesnar that was really good before he went to UFC. Um, but I mean, you know, and it, it's kind of like when he's getting landed on his head and stuff like that. Like I've taken German suplexes like that before. I don't want to say they don't really hurt that bad. It depends how you land on it. Like I've crumbled, I, I've folded over in Germans like that, and they're fine. Um, but then I've also folded over in Germans like that, where I'm like, "Ow!" Like I really took that, I really took that bump wrong. So you just you just don't know. Um, but I, I mean, it, it, it's great that everybody. Po- I think it's exactly what they 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 had them playing into their own, like into the palm of their hands. Like the crowd was dead silent almost turning on the match itself like like they did with the Lesnar and uh, Roman Reigns many matches that they've had. And then as soon as that nut shot happened, just watching the crowd come unglued, I'm like, really? I'm like, this is, this is great. And then they were into it for the rest of the match. I'm like, that's perfect booking. I'm like, it's almost like they set this up for many years of Lesnar having the exact same match just to have something different. So um, kudos to whoever talked Lesnar into actually – you know, uh, doing something extra in the match. Uh, I'll say this. This might have been Brock Lesnar's best match in the last two years. And if I could see this kind of Brock Lesnar every time, I could forgive Brock Lesnar not being on TV for months at a time now when he comes back and he delivers like this. Because seeing this, it renewed faith in me that Brock Lesnar... And look, I don't think Brock Lesnar... And this is me putting words out there. I don't think Brock Lesnar cares about wrestling. I don't think Brock Lesnar cares about UFC. Brock Lesnar just wants to beat someone up, get paid, and go home. He wants to be secluded out in Canada or Minnesota or wherever he lives. But to watch that match really made me feel like that's a guy that loves the wrestling industry. Yeah, no, and that's how I feel. Because Lesnar, you you don't, like, you know, the first five minutes you're like, ah, he's collecting a paycheck. And then afterwards like he's actually selling and he actually does a really good job he's super athletic his 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 selling is actually really good and uh, like eh, i don't know like lesnar's good it's just that it 
I don't know. Like when he had his match with AJ Styles, I believe it was was it last Survivor Series? Maybe yep, it um, was. I don't remember. Uh, those like him, like that match was one of his better ones. This one with Daniel Bryan was one of the better ones. I think he just needs like that guy that's like a really phenomenal worker to work with to kind of pull that old Brock Lesnar out of him and be like, hey man, we know you can go. Like you've done it before. You're super athletic. Let let's go and. I, I think he just has to have the, the, the right opponent to pull that old Brock Lesnar out of him. There you go. Is is there anything else we should talk about, at least Impact-wise, before we wrap this up and we welcome on Johnny Impact? Um, Impact-wise? Well, no, I, I mean, I we touch on a lot of Impact stuff at the, uh, when we talk with Johnny Impact uh, in and, the interview. And by the way, I know last Thursday. And yeah. Can I cut you off for a second? Yep. For, for anybody listening, we did not bring up the Austin Aries thing. It, it's tacky to bring it up. He wants to celebrate. This is an interview about him. And we just felt like the Austin Aries thing did not need to be brought up in this interview. I just wanted to put that out there now, just in case like the three guys that are listening that are going, oh, I can't wait to hear what he says about that. We didn't even bring it up because we just felt like this was not the interview time in the interview place. Or maybe we did, so keep on listening. Those oh, that want to tune out you just if you want to hear us. about it. Um, <laughs> you just swerved us. <laughs> no, but Johnny Impact is, uh, I mean, man, super cool guy. Um, I was playing, uh, well, what you last see on Impact is uh, he has a great match with Matt Seidel. Um, and then Brian Cage has a great match with Sammy Callahan in the main event. Brian Cage relinquishes his X Division title to, um, you know, exercise option C. Meaning that at the homecoming pay per view coming up in January sixth, it's going to be Johnny Impact versus Brian Cage, and we were there for the whole set of tapings. And um, there's a lot of good stuff going on, and I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that match because those are uh, both two phenomenal athletes. They're, I know they're out there to uh, give their best performance and stuff. I think this is going to be one of the best main event pay per views that. You know, we see all year, even though it's going to happen at January 6th. But, I mean, it'll be a contender for match of the year, I believe. All right. Outside of that, I just wanted to thank a few people for – and this is just off the top of my head from emails we've gotten. Uh, Matthew sent us an email. I want to say thank you to Matthew, who seemed like a very good guy. He said, you know, ride or die, he's going to be a fan of the podcast. Uh, Eric Kent, who sent me a, a Twitter message. Said he loves the show. He's going to support us. And by the way, Eric is a comic book artist who says, hey, I'm going to draw you guys a cool comic book cover of you and PD, which is kind of cool because I want to turn it into a poster. I I told him it should be of me and you fighting over a microphone, but I'm thinking it should be like me and you posing at, with the microphones as a tag team. I like it. And, you know, speaking of comic books, um, I think uh, – Johnny Impact would be a good Gambit. I mean, could you see him as a Gambit character? Mm, only maybe because of the long hair. And by the way, I've had a couple people hit home runs. See, tonight, uh, somebody sent a message that said Killer Cross should be Punisher. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's like 100%. I don't know why we didn't, uh, <laughs> we didn't think, think of that before. But, uh, you know, yeah. I go back and forth on, on Impact because I kind of had said, you're Captain America because he's your champion. He's the good. He seems like he might be no. the only face of the company right now. But he reminds me of Gambit, like his moves and stuff and his quickness. I mean, he just reminds me more of a Gambit. That, that's that's what, what I feel. Is, is Gambit, um, that's Marvel, correct? Right. I'm not a big comic book guy, so, but I, okay. Yes, you're, you're still in the same universe. It's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, as I put my nerd glasses back up, but uh, <laughs> that was a fun bit. If you didn't listen to last week's show, where we were comparing Impact and even, well, it was just Impact wrestlers to Marvel characters in honor of Stan Lee. So thank you guys for playing along with that. But look, I'm, I'm excited. The podcast is going to be good. We've had Johnny Impact. We've got several big name guests coming up too in the future. Yeah, I'm really looking uh, forward to the, the rest of this year, then beginning of next year. And uh, I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna slow it down, regardless of what happens. We're not slowing down, you and I, Dennis. So we're gonna keep going forward and 
doing what we do best at the Wrestling Perspective Podcast, and that's do our podcast. Yep, and don't forget to what for apparel.com slash WPP. Buy your shirt. Uh, hopefully, in the coming days and weeks, we will be adding different designs and colors and stuff like that, but there's only one up now. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you buy one. And you can go to also P's Pro Wrestling T Store, too, since we're promoting, <laughs> promoting everything. Forgot all about that. Uh, BlueChew.com. Uh, use the promo code WPP, please. It's only five bucks. You know, with the, you can take out your kid's college to help my kid's college, okay? Trust me, you're better off than I am at this point. And uh, this week, there were so many phone calls to sift through. I just deleted them all because uh, the first 20 were pretty negative. So I just deleted them all. I apologize, but if you guys want to be part of the wrestling perspective, uh, you call this number, you leave a voicemail. You can answer a question, ask us a question. You can comment on something. If you want us to talk about a question you have, we will. The number is 231-930-2053. PD and I will listen to it, throw it up, and you can be on the podcast as we go forward. Hopefully, you guys will take advantage of this as we're trying to do things to bring you, the fans, closer to us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have we just really like inter- interacting with the fans because when we interact with the fans, we know, hey, that's what you want from us, and we'll give that to you. And um, it's a whole big cycle that works for everybody. And just talking wrestling, man. I don't know how many times I say that, Dennis. I just love talking wrestling. And that's it. Someone someone asked me about the stress of the week, and I said, you know, it sucks because I just want to do this for fun. And then something happens that interferes, and all you want to do is get back to doing it for fun. And that's where we are now. Absolutely. All right. Without further ado, are you ready? Oh, oh yeah. Johnny Impact. Let's do this, Dennis. All right, PD here on the wrestling perspective. We may have our biggest guest yet, Pete. Oh, uh, I would say maybe. Well, our, our biggest guest this week, probably all month, maybe all year, maybe in the whole span of our podcast. But uh, man, I'm excited for this one, Dennis. Um, this man right here is probably one of my favorite guys to be around. I was just telling him this uh, uh, last week when I was hanging with him. Um, he is the current Impact World Champion, Johnny Impact. Johnny, what's going on, man? What's up, guys? Petey, yeah. Um, man, my sentiments about you, too. Thanks for having me. And, uh, man, what's going on? A little bit of everything. Impact has been really busy these days. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But, hey, before we jump into Impact, I want to uh, ask the first question. And I, I think you know you know what uh, I'm going to ask. Everybody's been asking about it. So I don't I don't watch uh, I don't watch Survivor. That's not me. But you know I'm hearing feedback from the internet this week. Even like Sanjay texted me, who's a huge Survivor fan, and he was like, "Man, you should see how uh, Johnny got eliminated from the show." It was like the way he described it to me. It wasn't like a double cross or a triple cross. It was like this really intricate like quadruple cross or something. I, w- what happened there, man? Uh, first of all. <laughs> Sanjay is a big fan of Survivor is a huge understatement. Sanjay, yeah, no. loves, Sanjay absolutely loves Survivor. He, I think, was more excited than I was about me being on Survivor so he could ask me questions about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The, uh, so basically, what happened was um, last week we called it, or actually I named the episode the Brochacho Blindside because <laughs> nice. myself, Dan, and another guy, Christian, we're uh, a little quick. We called ourselves the Brochachos. And uh, the Goliaths, seven of us, planned to blindside Christian because uh, he's a threat in the game. We wanted to start getting uh, the stronger players out. But um, in Survivor, to, uh, to make the game more interesting, they started using these things called immunity idols around season uh, 10, which means if someone plays an idol for themselves or any of the other players, none of the votes for that player counts. So... In this, uh, in this vote, we had all planned to blindside Christian. And um, there was someone in our alliance who told the other side what we were going to do, which uh, doesn't make much sense to me and uh, might have been the best for that person's game because uh, 
Alec is still in the game this week and I'm not. So they it's Christian and then our side played an idol to protect Angelina, who we thought their target was, but they did another strategy called splitting the votes. So they voted for Angelina and me in case we played an idol to protect Angelina, which meant that I went home, <laughs> which is a, kind of a, a confusing uh, way to sum up the last week's tribal council. But um, it was the first real big uh, kind of holy shit blindside moment of season 37. And uh, it turned out to be, ironically, still a brook shot your blindside, except I went home instead of the target that we had in mind, Christian. Oh. That that's tough. How hard is it now for you to have to relive that moment? Because I'm guessing, you know, this was probably filmed months and months, ages ago. You have to relive it then, and then all of a sudden it airs, and then you know everybody's tweeting you, calling you, texting you, and you have to relive this now and put on like a brave face, like ha ha ha, yeah, that was that uh, happens. Um. Well, I do have the uh, the benefit of hindsight and I've had a lot of time to process it and um, it's not fun to lose a game definitely not fun to lose a game for a million dollars so uh, there's, a, there's better things than a, to, to watch yourself get voted out of Survivor and relive it uh, when it happens but also I, I feel like in a lot of ways uh, getting blindsided like that and getting a voter out of the game quickly and surprisingly might be better than um, lingering and having a, a couple weeks of everybody in the game trying to figure out what they can do to get the mayor of Slantown voted out. So, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's pros and cons. At least, like, a, everything happened for me really fast, and I was, I was shocked. I did not see it coming then. And even now when I watch the episode back, I still, <laughs> I still feel shocked. It was a, it was a really well-done episode. Oh, that that sucks. Let's let's move yeah. on from from something that hurts that bad into some positive stuff. You are now the impact. Well, I mean, we're we're being we're also being dramatic about it. I mean, it, like it sucks, but like, I mean, I like I lost a game. There's like there's way worse things than <laughs> than getting voted out of Survivor. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm still happy. I'm healthy. Like I'm like I'm married. I'm on impacts. There's a. I mean, not to be over dramatic about it. I'll do it for well, you. Then, before we jump into that, so you know you, you're on Survivor, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you you've mingled with the producers and stuff. Uh, anything forthcoming or, or anything like that? Do they see you and like say, "Hey, man, we need to have him on these other shows," or maybe a return to Survivor? A- anything forthcoming that you can share? You know, there's a, there's nothing right now that I would say is like a hundred percent coming of Survivor that like might come up in the next year, but but you're right, yeah, I, um, I got along really well with, uh, with the cast, but also you're right, the, the producers and everyone behind the scenes. And I feel like uh, if, I, if I asked and, and uh, politics, probably <laughs> the door would be open to get onto a, another season of Survivor or Big Brother or The Amazing Race. Um, the, uh, the trick is to, to get onto some of the, uh, the scripted programming in CBS because those are usually separate departments, the reality and the scripted people. But um, also regardless of everything, like when I, when I left, I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to take two months off wrestling and um, I'm going to give up a lot, of, uh, a lot of wrestling dates and like that's how I make my livelihood now. But um, I'm also going to do this crazy experience and like win or lose, like I've never done anything like uh, freeze and starve on an island <laughs> with no cell phone before. And I, I'm pretty happy with just doing that experience, whether or not I won. And I'm, I'm glad I kind of went into it with that mentality because now I don't feel like, damn it, like I, I messed up big time or I, I screwed my chances of some like big windfall of money because that was only part of the reason I did it the whole time anyway. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the nerd in me, and I don't know if Petey's wondering this, but I, I at least have to ask you, out of all your time through this experience, how many wrestling fans were around you? And did you did anybody want to come up and talk wrestling with you? Um, well, first of all, there's uh, they're pretty strict, especially when, when it starts. You, uh, you arrive, and you see kind of the other players on the plane, but you're not allowed to talk to anybody. And the 
the people in charge of the cast and the talent, the contestants are only allowed to communicate very minimally with the contestants. So there was a couple people that I could tell were probably wrestling fans that recognized me. And um, they didn't really say anything until I'd been eliminated. And then when I came back, there was a bunch of people that were like, oh, my God. Been dying to talk to you about wrestling. The whole time. <laughs> now we can finally have a conversation about it. Um, That's great. All right, there Pete. was a there was quite a few. Uh, all right, Pete. Listen, we're like eight minutes into this thing, and I'm itching. Okay, let's move on. I'm I'm itching now. This is this is this is my wheelhouse as the uh, resident nerd here out of the three cool guys with abs. So I I have to at least. <laughs> start this off by asking you're now the face as you hold the championship at impact wrestling a company that has uh, i guess rehabilitated itself and in 2018 which i think is one of the greatest years in wrestling with indies all in and everything going on they give you the title you are now the flag bearer for this company do you have anything in mind or is it even in your mind of what you can do as the face of impact to change you know the perception of it with i guess the big time e fans or or how do you even think when you become a champion of a company how you can grow it well there's a there's a lot of ways to answer that question first of all um impact has been around forever and it's gone through through highs and lows and right now i like to think of impact kind of like rocky i mean it's had some negative connotations. Uh, people say a lot of things, bad things about Impact. But Impact has been hit more than any other promotion. It's still standing. And right now, I feel like it's got a real positive spin. It's on the upswing. And fans and the roster and the industry in general is paying a lot of attention to what Impact is doing because it's working. As far as um, what I can do as uh, the world champion of Impact... I mean, I feel like I've been doing it since I have got there. The uh, the culture in the locker room of everyone going out there and leaving it all out in the ring every night and competing in a in a healthy way to have the match of the night within the locker room has has been there for a while now, and that's the kind of environment where I think you get a really excited, competitive, fresh roster competing in a good way to have the match of the night, and that's the kind of show that fans respond to. I mean, that's the kind of show that I like to watch. That's the kind of roster that I like to be a part, a part of. With uh, regard to, like, is there any like, quick answer or, like, fix or, or anything that will suddenly make impacts blow up? Um, I, I think about that a lot, and I think the, the answer to that question is no. I think every, every time I think about what makes a successful wrestling promotion, the answer always comes back as incremental work, Solid wrestling, solid talent, a solid job behind the scenes by guys like PD and Sanjay and Scott and Don um, leads to a promotion that fans start to count on as a good show and are going to start wanting to watch again or continue to watch. So, Johnny, I, I agree with everything you just said. Now, you, you've been with the company for, I, I want to say, a little over a year now, I would say, like maybe a year and a half ish, and yeah, you know, I, I I know what it's like behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff, and you do too. But I want to know is like, how do you stay optimistic? And when I when I ask that, like, I'll, I'll see like management approach a certain character, and they'll say like, yeah, you know, we need you to do this or whatever the case may be, and the character might give some like. Uh, you know, pushback, and then there might be not an argument, but like a disagreement and stuff. Whenever I see management approach you, and whether and whether you disagree with it or not, say if you do disagree with it, you might be like, "Well, where are we going from here?" And they'll give their explanation, and you'll be like, "Okay, cool." And whether you disagree or not, you, you just kind of like look at it like, "Hey, I'm just going to do my best." So, how are you different than everybody? Like, how do you stay so optimistic, like not worrying about all that kind of stuff? that goes with it. Like you're, you're just so optimistic. You're like, I'm just going to go out there and do my best. Like how, how do you stay in that mind frame? Um, it takes a lot of energy, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been, I mean, everyone's gone through eyes and lows and I've been through like, um, like a time where I, I wasn't as optimistic. And that for me now, that's, that's like seven, eight years ago. And, um, 
now, like uh, one of the cool things about where I am in my career and the way I feel about myself and um, my position right in, in the world of wrestling with impact is you're right. Like whatever, whatever I get to do on a TV show, I mean, at some point you need to stop arguing about story or the creative or, or who you're doing what with or what you want and just take that piece of time that you have and think about it as, okay, like here's what we're doing tonight. How can I make that the, the best possible version of that five minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is? And how can I be emphatically Johnny Impact and do it in a way that only I would do within that time? And as soon as you start thinking along those lines, like how can I do my best with this time as opposed to saying, uh, you know what would be better? What if, what if this and what if that? Because when you go off that what if and you start to think about how to, you could change things and maybe something could be more about you or work out more in your favor if the, the story was different, you start to spin your wheels in a way that's not productive. And yeah. impact is fast paced, man. I mean, we were shooting what, six weeks of TV in, <laughs> in three days. It you was were, actually, yeah. Uh, it was eight weeks, but, um, but okay. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Eight, eight weeks of TV in three days. I forgot about the Thanksgiving episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that, like, a, that type of, like, second guessing and talking is, like, isn't something that really right now, I mean, when you're, when you're at TV is, uh, in my opinion, like, beneficial. You don't get the best results. I, I feel like I get excited to have good matches and just kind of like what you said, PD, like, do the best with whatever I have given. And sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But when you think of it in that way, it's a lot more fulfilling and it's a lot easier to stay happy. Yeah, no, and I agree with you. Like I like last uh, Thursday on Impact, you wrestled uh, Matt Seidel. And you guys had an awesome match. It wasn't on the main event of the show because we had a, a bigger storyline leading up to you on the show. But you guys had, you know, the, the match of the night. And then, um, you know, you had Brian Cage exercise option C what has what hasn't been done in um probably oh at least like six or seven years um so now it's now it's it's set in stone you and Brian Cage at homecoming I mean have you guys ever wrestled each other before like are you excited about this um (laughs) I'm super excited about wrestling Brian Cage because he's one of the most talented guys in in the world and underrated even though a lot of people realize what a phenom he is um, I'm a little bit nervous about wrestling him for the championship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the obviously. Same reason I'm excited about wrestling him. But um, option C to me is one of those things that feels like an Impact Wrestling original concept. Yeah. And uh, it is really cool that it's happening now that Brian Cage took option C and that the fans in Las Vegas chanted option C almost every night. So um, I'm real pumped to, to wrestle Brian in Nashville. And it's exciting to be doing something that feels uniquely impact, you know? Yeah, especially going back to, you know, we're going to have the return of the Ultimate X match. It's almost like we're going back to our roots. So hopefully, uh, you know, this is this is a, a big stepping stone and building block to start off 2019. And you to continue to be world champion, right, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm planning on doing. Man. <laughs> you, you, you said... Speaking of unique in Impact, you recently set the internet ablaze, at least the wrestling uh, sheets, when the, I would use the word iconic from the Jericho Cruise, you were in the middle of the ring with Jay Lethal, who was a, I don't know if he was an Impact original, but definitely an Impact darling, you both kind of faced off against each other, the internet was ablaze, talking about Ring of Honor versus Impact champion, now, knowing you as a professional, if leadership comes to you and tells you to do it, you're, you're going to go out and do it. But as a wrestling fan, you know, can you talk to me a little bit about the moments, you know, backstage, you guys talk to each other, how excited that might've been for you going, you know, here's two rival companies that up until recently have not had a good relationship and you're about to be in the center of the ring with their champion. Uh, Jay Lee was somebody that, I mean, I mean, you know, Jay Lee was somebody that I've been aware of in wrestling for a, a really long time. Somebody that I respect and that I'm a fan of. And um, the opportunity to work with Ring of Honor in an Impact versus Ring of Honor type situation, I think is the exact type of thing that both of our companies would really benefit from. 
So, yeah, of course. Like, a, both of us were excited about it. The Impact office and the uh, Ring of Honor office on the cruise, everyone was excited about it. And I'm glad the internet gets set ablaze with uh, talking about it. What if this? What if that? Hopefully those two companies can work together because there's so much cross-promotional so many cross promotional matches and so many cross promotional things that I would legitimately think would be great for both rosters and both companies that it seems like a win win. And uh man, like I I hope it is something that works out. It's a uh, I feel like it's something that uh, the opposite impact is open to and it seemed at the time it was something that the Ring of Honor office was open to also. So figuring out the details and the specifics <laughs> is never as easy as a standing in the ring for a, as it was for me to stand in the ring with Jay Lethal and talk about how great it would be to have a champion versus champion match. But um, both of us did that because we both believe that it's something that would be really cool. I mean, obviously for me personally, but for the fans of wrestling and both companies as well. Pete, I've got two more questions. I don't know about you, bud. Uh, you, you go ahead. Let's knock him out because we've been keeping Johnny here. We talked about Survivor for eight minutes. We took up too much time, so oh, go ahead, Dan. <laughs> I know. Now I'm going to have to watch it a show too late. But you are becoming a veteran in the locker room now. You've been around forever. I've enjoyed watching you at every promotion. You were one of the reasons why I started watching Lucha Underground. At any time I'm back at the Impact Tapings, and you walk by, I like nudge P. I'm like, dude, that's that's Johnny Impact. He's like, stop it, act professional. <laughs> so it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's true. I, I so one day I'm gonna come up and be like, um, Mr. Impact, will you shake my hand? And you're gonna look at me and just walk away. Trust me, it'll happen. But no, it won't. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll charge you five bucks. I'll take it. <laughs> Best five bucks I ever spent. Anyways, you. You're becoming a leader now in the locker rooms, and I always ask Petey this about his character on screen in the evolution. I've, I've seen you take a evolution into your character. Do you, is this something you think about now as you get older, maybe in-ring style, or the pr- presentation of Johnny Impact, Mundo, Morrison going forward? Oh, man. Every professional wrestler in the business thinks about that every day. I mean, if they don't, they should. And I, I certainly do the, uh, the, the evolution of the business and the way that wrestlers are portrayed. And, uh, like, I guess it's a little cliche to talk about staying relevant and, and evolving, but it cliches are cliches for a reason because they're based on, on truth. But yeah, absolutely. Yes. I think about the way that Johnny impact is portrayed in the ring. I mean, I'm, I'm married now. I'm married to, to Ty of Valkyrie Impact. I'm an Impact World Champion. I'm traveling around the world wrestling for a lot of other wrestling organizations. And that creates this wrestling landscape that didn't exist five years ago. That It didn't seem like a television company acknowledged outside wrestling organizations nearly as much as is happening right now, which feels cool because reality wrestling fans are, are smart and they're fans of wrestling in general. And it, it seems insulting sometimes to ignore past histories and the reality of what's going on outside of the world of impact. So as far as specifically, uh, some of the, the ideas that I have with the way the wrestling business is going, I'm actually thinking about that in depth last night and, Actually, Petey, I'll talk to you about this uh, at the next TV tapings. But I've got sounds a, a good, man. Specific, but I don't want to. I don't want to give anything away right now. Oh, well, uh, uh, sounds good. Well, Dennis, we'll, we'll move on to the next. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that uh, conversation. Oh man, to be a, yeah. to be a fly on the wall and, and to wrap it up. <laughs> You came into Impact Wrestling just about the same time that they really started turning around their reputation you know, beforehand. And Petey and I, we talk openly on the podcast about before this new regime came in, the reputation, the struggles, a lot of the, you know, shooting themselves in the foot were by their own hands. When they approach you or you approach them about coming into the company at that point, was there any hesitation on, on your end? hearing the rumors, knowing what they've gone through. You know, Petey and I, we've talked to wrestlers before he came back, and they were like, I'm never going back there again. And they're the same wrestlers now who will say to us, 
I, you know what? They've changed, and I'm shocked, and I love it now. What was, what was your, I guess, image of Impact Wrestling before you signed your name onto that contract? Well, I'd had, I mean, I had had, had uh, conversations with previous regimes since uh, since I left WWE in 2012, 2013 about going to Impact, and I never decided to go back then. But we never really got too far along in the discussion. The main thing that changed for me was the idea that Impact Wrestling Talent primarily represents Impact, and Impact is a... I mean, not just a national TV show in the United States, but the United States, Canada, UK, um, <laughs> Mexico, all global. It's a global TV show. But the idea that if we're able to work for other promotions and there's no conflict, it doesn't seem like now that Impact any, has any sort of problem with that. That, to me, is one of the main things that felt like it embodied what pro wrestling has evolved into in current day. That I'm a big fan of, and I thought that was a good indicator that things had changed. And I mean, when I even when I got the impact, the, the guy that I negotiated my first contract with was uh, was Jeff Jarrett, and he was only there for the the first week of tapings that I that I was at, and then he was gone <laughs> for the next month. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I uh, I feel like it's not too hard now to to come to a set of impact tapings and realize that the people that are making decisions are making a lot of shrewd, smart decisions based on we've got a company that has struggled for a long time and there's no time or budget to be blowing money on a bunch of unnecessary things. So the time that we have on TV feels important and valuable, which is the, which is why I think everyone's so competitive and working so hard, but it's also motivating to be a part of that as a talent. And those are all the feelings that I got when I first came to impact. And I feel like that's, that's why I'm happy there. That's why the impact brand is doing better and better. Hey, I couldn't agree with you more, Johnny. I, 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 and I'm so glad that you came to be a part of impact. Like, and, and seriously, when I say you're one of my favorite guys to hang with, just, like when we were playing blackjack the other day, man, I had so much fun. Yeah. And man, you and your wife, I mean, you, you guys are, are just are great together and stuff. But uh, anyway, you so know what? I, so I, I, what's up? I've never had that much fun losing a hundred bucks before. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> me neither, <laughs> man. Didn't bother me losing the money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, awesome, man. Hey, so where can people find you um, on social media find and all that kind of stuff? You can find me on Twitter at the real Morrison. You can find me on Instagram at John Hennigan and on my Facebook page right. at John Moore, but I don't use it that much. John, thank All you right. so much Sounds for good. spending some time and talking some wrestling with us. Thanks for having me guys. I'm sure I'd, uh, I'd, well, I'd love to come back every week. We got him every week now. <laughs> <laughs> He's the new co-host. That's right. You're out. Right, John. <laughs> That's awesome.